If you have HIFU and then decide to have salvage therapy, can this be less effective because you've had HIFU? So this is a really important question. Uh, the, um, the easiest surgery is obviously the first time you do surgery. Um, if you've done anything to the prostate before, it makes the surgery a little bit more difficult, not impossible and, and certainly not something that a good surgeon cannot deal with. We talked about TURP earlier. Um, a lot of men have had TURP or laser, uh, and that obviously causes scarring at the bladder neck. And when you remove a prostate, you, you remove it off the bladder neck and off the urethra, prostate comes out and you join the bladder neck onto the urethra. Um, and, and that can make surgery a lot more difficult. Uh, previous severe infection can make uh, dissection around the prostate very sticky. Previous radiation therapy uh, is probably the hardest operation. So when you remove a prostate after radiotherapy, particularly if that's been brachytherapy, because the prostate is tiny and very stuck down. Uh, focal therapy, we have found, has remarkable little impact on the surgery. Um, and the reason is that, uh, and, and, the, and the clue is in the name, it's, it's focal. Um, and so you're treating a very, by definition, a very small part of the prostate, usually on one side. Um, and, you know, let's say you're treating the left base of the prostate, uh, the whole right-hand side of the prostate, the posterior aspect of the prostate, the apical part of the prostate, I'm describing the anatomical limits of the prostate, the bladder neck, will all be normal to the surgeon. The surgeon will not know uh, there's been anything there. Uh, obviously, there'll be some scar tissue in the area where the focal therapy was done. Uh, there'll be no surprise there'll be scar tissue there. Uh, one can see that on the MRI, and that can be part of the surgical planning. So in the published work that we've done, um, and I've worked a lot with uh, a colleague of mine called Paul Cathcart on this, um, is that the functional outcomes are really very, very good. Obviously, when you um, do anything for failure, um, so if you remove a prostate after radiation has failed, or indeed I do HIFU after radiation has failed, uh, then obviously the patient is older, the disease has been around longer, and by definition you're selecting patients who are at greater risk uh, because the cancer that they've had treated has managed to survive the first treatment. And that does change the nature of the cancer and it does change um, the overall risk associated with it. Uh, and so uh, when you do remove a prostate, a prostate after radiation, after cryotherapy, after HIFU, after indeed any form of treatment, you're going to find worse disease uh, because it's disease that has already managed to survive the initial treatment that you had. Uh, the key is obviously uh, in all these cases is very careful surveillance. Um, the one of the interesting attributes of um, the focal therapy cohort, in other words, men that have had focal therapy, is that they're very, very closely monitored. They are the most closely monitored group of men in the world in that they have very regular PSAs and regular MRIs. So if we do find that uh, they develop a new cancer, say, or in the first year or two develop a um, recurrence of the initial cancer, both are possible, uh, we catch it early and we can deal with it early. Most men after focal therapy uh, who fail, and there are two types of failure. Um, the first is that we haven't managed to clear it, um, and that happens early, usually in the first couple of years, peaks at around 18 months. Uh, most men choose to have a retreatment, and I think that's perfectly reasonable, and we can do that safely and reasonably effectively, with about a 70 to 80% chance of being free of disease at five years. Um, the other form of failure is that another cancer develops. And this would be the same as a woman who has a left-sided breast cancer treated. She still has mammography on the right, and then maybe five years later is found to have a second cancer. Um, and in fact, that's the case in all cancers. You have, you have your colon cancer, you still need a colonoscopy every four or five years just to check on everything. Um, you have your kidney cancer removed, you still need the other kidney checked. So that's, that's commonplace. Uh, we think that risk is relatively low, and we're trying to find out the kind of determinants of the individual and the prostate and the cancer uh, that makes it likely for that individual to develop a new cancer. We don't really know the answers to that yet. So I, I, hope, I hope that's helpful. A very long uh, response to a very short and very excellent question.